Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and I'm coming to you on my wife's birthday. So if you'd like to buy her a drink for her birthday, for allowing her to let me do this before we get our day started, uh, that would be awesome, and I'm sure she would definitely appreciate it. Hey, but regardless, we're talking about the playoff tournament today. We're going to be on the rookie qualifying round, and as you can see here, we shot a minus 14. Now, this is going to be a tougher tournament, okay? We're not going to see as high as scores as we normally do. Uh, maybe as the rounds progress, uh, we might, but here is the biggest thing I can tell you about this. We have got to hit the par threes. The par threes are our best chance to get extra drops, and so are the par fours, like hole number one and hole number eight. Always very good opportunities for eagles. The hardest thing is going to be the par fives. So the par fives have tough eagles to get, which I really like. I think that's a good part of the game. I wish more par fives were more difficult because they should be. So... I'm going to show you how to play them. If you have Berserkers, you're going to be in a really good spot, but you don't have to use them. I didn't use them on everything, so I'll kind of show you uh, what we're doing here. But we shot a minus 14. You can see on this account, I did not get hole number one, but I did on my other account. So we do have that drop on there as well. So what you're going to see here is a good path to a minus 15. And the cool part is we picked up four uh, chests along the way, so that's really nice. But let's go ahead and hop into it. If you're not a subscriber, please become one. It would mean a lot. And if you like my videos, please take a moment there to hit the like button and smash that thumbs up. Here we go, hole number one. We're gonna play this one with the katana just because I like to get to side spin. So here I go with three bars of side spin, five bars of top. And the reason that I go with five bars of top and not six is because I do wanna make sure that I do stay in thorn range. Now, of course, if you have an extra mile, six or seven then you're going to have four and a half bars of top you're going to see here that i put my orange ring on the rough at the plus three yard mark for me we flip the camera around we pull our rings normal shot this is no overpower and we roll in very nicely to leave us for shot number two shot number two i play 10 percent at minimum distance you can see that when I move my club back here, I'm, I'm almost in between clubs. That's why I don't push that drive too hard. I do want to make sure that I stay in thorn range. The shot is much easier to take with the thorn. I do three bars of backspin, three bars of backspin, and we got to hit perfect. This account, I hit perfect. My other account, I hit great. But we do hit that perfect ball here. And you see, we're going to come in very nicely, center of the cup, picking up an eagle on hole number one. Takes us to hole number two. All the par threes are hole-in-one opportunities, okay? They're all there. So hole number two, we're going to be playing this one one-to-one. -one. So 3.4 mile per hour wind means we're going to move this 3.4 rings. One bar of backspin, okay? And now I'll show you the setup point. Set a point is going to be the yellow ring right there on the rough line. So we're playing a rough bump, yellow ring on the rough. You're going to see here I've got the ball center to hole. We are going to need to move this over a fraction to the right-hand side, just barely to the right. So keep that in mind. So you're going to see here we pull this shot. No overpower, perfect ball. Hits the rough really nicely. And it is just right there. So let's just move this over again, a fraction to the right-hand side, and we'll be in a really good spot to pick up a hole-in-one on hole number two. Hole number three begins our par five. And again, these things are going to be tough. So this is a situation where if you had a berserker, I mean, I do have berserkers, um, but I didn't want to play the qualifying round with a bunch of berserkers. We might need them later in the tournament, okay? Okay especially uh, if we get hit with headwind. Here we have a good wind. We're getting tailwind, which is nice. But here's our setup point. This is a little dangerous. You cannot hit a great left. We're going to be going with four bars at top. No side. Four top, no side. Look at my green ring. It's right there on the rough line. Again, cannot hit a great left here. We're going to make our pool, which is 10% at max. 
and you notice I pushed back up to maximum distance. The reason I do that is I need all of this drive. I hit a perfect ball with no overpower. Right there is the reason I push back up to max. We want to make sure that we hit the second part of the fairway and we roll back up. You can also see why I didn't use overpower. If you use overpower, you're probably going to roll into the rough there. You can't hit rough or sand on this par five because there's no way to get to the green in two. Now, this is gonna take us with a big dog shot. The big dog shot here, you'll notice my spin adjustments. Right here we have it at 2.3 top, one and a half to the right. Now take a look at my ball guideline. My ball guideline looks good. We're bouncing on the fringe and then onto the green. This is pulled 10% at max. This is again a no overpower shot and I do hit a perfect ball. This is what we really need to pay attention to here. One, two, and we just roll too much. So we're going to have to reduce this top spin a little bit. Now the nice part is I did hit a perfect ball and I saved that one out of the bunker. Okay, takes us to hole number four. Hole number four, we're taking 10% at minimum distance. One bar of left side spin with a navigator. Again, 10% at absolute minimum. One bar of left side spin, 2.1 top. That's your spin adjustment right there. Now we're gonna move our target around. You see how this ball guideline, it kind of bends back and forth as you move this thing? but we're gonna move it right here. Notice the ball guideline is nicely through the pin. It is in the hole, but the ball guideline is completely on the left side of the cup, inside the cup, but left-hand side offset. The red ring, as you can see, is almost all on the fringe. Just a little sliver of it is on, or I'm sorry, the, all the red ring is in the rough. We're doing a rough bump, but just a sliver of it there is on the green fringe area. Here we make our ring adjustment. We do hit that perfect ball. And this thing comes in very nicely dead center for a hole in one. Okay, I'm gonna show you two different ways you can play this hole. If you would like to gamble, this is absolutely one way to do it. You can take your big topper here and you can go full top spin one bar of side spin to the left. Now, the thing about this one is I think you need a big topper four because remember in tournaments past, some people tried it with a big topper three and you may get stuck in the rough. But, um, and this is also here going to be max curl to the left. This is 10% adjustment at max. This is a perfect ball. You're going to go from fairway and to fairway. Now you see here, this is the thing about this hole is, look at the first bounce. Notice there was no overpower used. We're very, very close to the rough, so you can't use overpower. But right here is also a very lucky bounce because look how close we get to this rough now we could have hit that rough and rolled out but they don't get onto the green now that's going to be very fluky depending on you know what happens for you but that shot is there okay it is there and if you hit the rough and roll out worst case scenario you know, you're looking at maybe a thorn shot to drop an eagle, which would be a very, very good opportunity. Now, the safest way to play it is going to be this way. You can always lay up with your sniper. And the reason we do that is because we like to take the rough bump for the second shot. So here we go four back, one bar side spin to the right. And we play right there with our white, wearing, <laughs> white ring on the rough. I just pulled this one one for one. Perfect ball. And we go to the fairway here. Leads us for shot number two. Shot number two stinks. I hit a great ball to the left, so we're going to miss way to the left. But you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to execute a rough bump. And to, in my opinion, this rough bump has never been stable. I'm playing at 10% at minimum. Um, you know, the rough kind of bends, so sometimes it kicks your ball in a weird way. But regardless, a great left. That's going to do me no good. All right, we delete that one from the books. We'll never use that shot again. Okay, hole number five. This is one to where, again, um, you can use yourself a kingmaker. You can even use yourself a titan if you want to. It, you're going to have to use a lot of overpower, though, if you do that. So uh, because of the slight headwind flicker, I do go with a berserker. And it's going to be one of those tournaments that just proves um, 
you know, if you're willing to spend a dollar or two on the golden shot, you really need to save your berserkers for tournaments like this because, man, these are some long par fives. Here we're going to go with one bar of side spin to the right, four and a half bars of top spin. You can see I'm stretching my club out to make sure that I'm okay to get to the green. Not to the green, to the fairway. Boy, sometimes I can't talk. There it is. I'm using a half a ball of overpower. One half a ball of overpower. And we roll onto the fairway. Now, unfortunately here I clipped the rough. I was hoping to not do that. I was hoping to go fairway to fairway um, to make shot number two easier. But regardless, shot number two here. This is going to be with our big dog. We don't need to pull any rings because we're getting straight up headwind. So all we're going to do is pick a spot here, point and shoot. Full top, full right. Okay, pick a spot, point and shoot. Notice here I'm going with overpower, but not full overpower, but absolute max curl to the right. Perfect ball. You see here, it's a good thing we don't go with overpower because you know we could have possibly rolled into the rough there. But a lot of you um, that are gonna that, that don't clip the rough, you'll be higher up on the second fairway, making it a lot easier to get to the fringe area on your second shot. Um, and then from here, I do have the replay for shot number three. Um, I'm not sure why it's not there. Right here. Shot number three, I played at 20% at minimum. Full top spin, no side spin. Ball guidelines, center a cup. We make our pool, perfect ball, and we're dead center, okay? So that's shot number three if you want to take a look at it. Okay, 20% at minimum. I want you to notice here I have a navigator ready to go. We cannot use a navigator on this hole. We have to switch to a marlin. Um, you can see I'm at absolute minimum line on my distance. That's way too close to play to that rough line. So we gotta change this to a power zero ball, which we do. Okay, we pull out the, um, the Marlin, and this shot's really close, okay? Just a little bit of tweaks, everybody, and you're good to go. You see there, 1.3, 1.4 top. We need to change this to 1.7. I want you to go 1.7 top. Now I want you to take a look at my ball guideline. Notice how the end of my ball guideline, well, most of my ball guideline is in that light green vertical row, row. But at the very top, as we get closer to the hole, it starts to be closer to the dark green vertical row. I want you to put the end of your ball guideline right in the middle where the dark green and the light green squares meet. So basically, I want you to move this over a fraction to the left-hand side. This is pulled 20% at minimum distance. Perfect ball, and you'll see here that we come up um, a little bit to the right-hand side, but also a little bit short. That's why we need to add a little bit more top spin, and we need to move this over just a fraction to the left, okay? You might want to take one of these balls to practice, or maybe two, just to make sure, because I think, depending on your wind strength, we need to play this 1.5 to 1.7-ish top spin and move over, like I said, a fraction to the left, but, but... When we add the top spin, the ball's gonna come in faster. So it's not gonna have as much time to move to the right hand side. So that my original setup point might be spot on. Again, because we're adding top spin, the ball's gonna come in faster. So we may not have come into the right hand side of the cup. Hopefully that makes sense, but you should be able to follow that. Take a couple of balls to practice mode and make sure that we're spot on on that hole. This is a must eagle in my opinion, in order to win and compete in this tournament. It's a very short par four. I always play it this way. I always go straight up. Uh, again, five top, three left. I'm playing five top, three left just because I want to make sure that I stay in thorn range. 10% at mid, at mid distance. Notice here a little bit of overpower, just barely. I used overpower until the ball was going through those bottom little triangle things. but we get the ball nicely up the fairway. Pretty simple shot number two. Uh, we could have pushed the drive even harder because I'm at mid distance here. And I was at mid distance on both of my accounts and I hit this on both my accounts. Now, on this account, I purposely didn't qualify. I'm gonna qualify tomorrow morning. I'll probably play live. 
and test out some of these shots that I missed and pray for perfects. But here we're going three bars of backspin. Again, 10% at mid. That's two rings exactly. Perfect ball. And we bounce into the cup, dead center for a nice little eagle. All right, hole number nine. Again, I hope you liked the video. I hope it's going to help you. Please subscribe. Please take a second before you leave to hit the thumbs up. This is, again, a difficult par five. Again, uh, a berserker ball puts you at a big advantage. For me, with a Titan, two top, two left. All right, I'm, putting, I'm aiming here with half my orange ring in the rough, half of it on the fairway. I'm leaving myself a little bit of room for a great ball in case I accidentally hit one. But I don't. 10% at max. Little bit of curl to the left. Perfect ball. And we're good to go. Pretty simple here. Takes us in for shot number two. Shot number two is, again, one that we need to make a little tweak on. But ultimately here, what I'm going to do is go with two bars of left side spin. I went with one. Oh, I think I changed this to two top. Yeah, two top, two left. I think hole number three scared me a little bit to use too much more top spin, but here I pulled 10% at max. Now take a look at my overpower here, quite a bit of OP with a little bit of curl to the left. This time I clip the rough and I come up short, but this is no big deal. This is gonna leave us with a very easy shot for shot number three to pick up the eagle. We're gonna get basically perfect headwind. So all we have to do here is go full top spin. We don't even have to move any rings. Full top spin, ball guide line through the hole. Even get away with a great shot here, but we drop it in for an eagle, all right? If you're able to execute all those shots, that's a minus 15. We left a par threes right at the, at the cup on a couple that we missed. So realistically, you could put up a massive score and get yourself to a really, really big advantage to start off this tournament. All right, I'm going to hit you with Pro a little bit later. Thank you for watching.